George, we've been told that in the universe there may be as much as five times more dark matter than all the matter that we see in all the galaxies, stars, Earth, everything all put together. How did this happen? What was it about the early universe that has so much dark matter, and, and why does it matter? So we're not sure yet what this dark matter is, though we're trying. One of the great candidates is the thing we call WIMPs, for weakly interacting massive particles. And one of the reasons they picked that is if you have a particle that interacts weakly, it will decouple from the rest of the universe early. So the, the decoupling, if you have a very dense universe, things are all bouncing together. So even something with a small very interaction hot, rate, very, very high hot, energy, very dense, things with even small interaction rates will interact with each other because the interaction rate is so high. Mm -hmm. But as the universe expands and gets less dense, the interaction rate goes down. And if the interaction is weak enough, the particles just sort of separate out. And so weak particles will do that, and they will do it in such abundance that they sort of naturally will make up somewhere on the scale of 25% of the universe. And so you could say, well, what for a long time that didn't matter because the radiation, the thing we call the relative radiation now, was the dominant form of energy in the universe, the, these relativistic, you know, energetic uh, light and other particles. They dominated and they, the, the acoustic variations that were going on, you know, the, the small variations, the little ripples in the pond, they were dominated by that. But as the universe expands and gets less diffuse, the dark matter particles become more and more important. So at the end, their main thing that's being driven by these oscillations, and when their energy density gets higher than that of the radiation, they can actually start clumping, and they form the cosmic web. And they can do this a factor of 10 earlier, and therefore a factor of 10 more development than the ordinary matter can, because the ordinary matter is like being put in the sun, it gets blown into a plasma, right? Imagine I put you in the sun, you would vaporize, <laughs> right, right. and then you'd be blown and spread uniformly across the sun. Right. The ordinary matter, that's what happens to it in the early universe, and, and it's just spread uniformly and can't clump to form stuff. It's only when the universe gets a little more expanded and cools down, in fact, 10 more expanded and cools down, then ordinary atoms can form, and then they'll get attracted by this dark matter web. So let, let, let's understand what's happening. At this, at this critical moment, there will be no ordinary matter because it's still too hot and too many interactions for ordinary matter to form. Well, but there's a lot of ordinary matter, but it's spread it's pretty spread uniformly. It's very, yeah, yeah. It's very dispersed. Right. It, it hasn't clumped together. Right. But dark matter, because it, it, it weakly interacts, has, been, has formed earlier and therefore clumped together and has now formed this, this, this web? It's beginning to form the cosmic web. It start, it's a journey, right? It takes the 14 billion years. Right, right. But it has a factor of 10 earlier in expansion of the universe. When the universe is 10 times smaller, it can start clumping, and therefore it doesn't get pulled apart as much as the, the ordinary matter. When the universe is 10 times as big, it's spread 10 times as far apart, right. or 1,000 times less dense, right? It, it, uh, it gets spread out much broader, whereas the dark matter is left a little bit more in this pristine condition. It doesn't expand as much, and it starts forming the cosmic web. It still takes a long time for the cosmic web to form, but it's got a head start, and it started, it's starting to form this web so that when the ordinary matter is released, it has this already, this ghostly framework, which dominates it five times as much at least, you know, material that it can fall into and, and, and light up, right? It's like putting the neon signs, we're open for business, right? Wow. So, so in other words, but dark matter, even though it weakly interacts, does interact gravitationally. Right. So it does attract the matter. It's like a, a lattice structure. I don't know, like a, like a, like a, 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 a wooden lattice that, that uh, plants can grow on. Yeah, I really think of it as like a, you know, you ever come in an old house with the dusty cobwebs everywhere? Yeah, yeah. It's more like that. Uh -huh. It's this sort of fuzzy, foamy, Stuff. So you, if you see the pictures of the simulations, you'll realize why we say cosmic web. It's not a real regular web, but it's, it's this kind of web that just the, very, the small variations that we had in the early universe just leave these residual places and they, they draw in the material from around them just by gravity and it, it automatically sort of collapses into this web-like web structure. And at the nodes of the web, you get clusters of galaxies. And, it's beautiful. I mean, the, the pictures you see are beautiful, but the way it works is beautiful, too. Now, if, let's say, there, there, for some reason there wasn't any dark matter, then it, w it would have been much more difficult, if not impossible, for ordinary matter to form in, in the same way. There wouldn't have been this cosmic web lattice structure for ordinary matter to clump around? It, it would, and in fact, one of the issues that came up, people, before we did the Kobe discovery, people were writing articles saying the Big Bang must be wrong because... 
given ordinary matter, you cannot make, you cannot make the galaxies because you've already set limits that said the fluctuations weren't big enough and you only have, the, you know, at that time 10 billion years to do it because we didn't know about the expanding universe yet, the, the accelerating universe, the, uh, you know, there, it wasn't possible to take ordinary matter fluctuations and grow them to the structure we see today. So we needed the head start that the dark matter did, and we needed the extra binding power of that dark matter in order to make this complicated cosmic web and galaxies and clusters of galaxies. So the fact that we're amazed that five times as much matter is dark matter in today's universe, uh, which seemingly has minor benefit to us because we, we have no interaction with it really was absolutely essential for the formation of what we have today. It, it was it was core in the whole operations and we also have with the cosmic background the tools to see it because and the very last the acoustic oscillations are driven not only by the photons but by the interaction of the matter and the photons and more matter in there causes the peaks the variations that we see in things to be higher, whereas the ordinary matter causes alternate peaks to be higher and lower. And so we can separate what is, what is the dark matter component from what is the ordinary matter component and see that it's, that is roughly 4% ordinary matter and roughly, you know, 25%. So you're actually seeing from the, from this photograph of the, the universe at right. 4, 400,000 years old, the cosmic microwave background radiation, you're seeing from that photograph the peaks representing dark matter and matter and their ratios? Yes. Isn't that nice? <laughs> so it's just the same thing. So imagine you have a bell and you strike the bell. You will have a fundamental given by the geometry of the bell and the, 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 and also the speed of sound in the bell. If you make the bell out of steel or it will be different than if it's out of brass and so forth. So you can sort of tell what it's made out of and it comes down to what the speed of sound is, but it also comes down to the, the ratio of the harmonics tell you about what the different alloys are. And so it's very much like a musical instrument, the, the, the early universe that has these small, you know, acoustic waves going through it. And by looking at how the speed of sound and the variations of the harmonics goes, you can say, oh, well, it's 25% dark matter and it's 4% ordinary matter, and the rest of it must be something else. All from that beautiful first picture. Yes. Well, we now have more pictures. We have the WMAP satellite and lots of other uh, balloon-borne and airborne uh, observations. We're seeing more and more detail. That's why we're doing the next generation, you know, the, the second generation satellite and now the third generation satellite.